This is an original Macintosh 128K from 1984. And after 40 years, these can be hard to find and expensive in good working condition. But what if I told you that you could have much the same experience by hooking up a $4 Raspberry Pi Pico to a VGA monitor? We're building a Macintosh and a microcontroller, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy misusing the marvels of modern engineering to play a bunch of old Mac games, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Pico Micro Mac is a project by the incontrovertibly cool Matt Evans, which embeds his own Micro Mac emulator right into a Raspberry Pi Pico. The $4 Pico has a dual core 133 megahertz ARM Cortex CPU, making it an order of magnitude more powerful than the originally eight megahertz $2,500 original Macintosh. For maximum effect, we're gonna be pairing this Micro Mac Pi Pico with another project from my good friend Ron of Ron's Computer Videos that gives the thing both power and VGA out. Which means that for the price of a Pico and a $10 kit, you can have a hardware-based original Macintosh experience with an incredibly low barrier to entry. And if you're willing to tweak some of the emulator's variables on this thing, using the wonderfully tongue-in-cheek guide that Matt provides on his GitHub, you can even make your own Mac on here, unlike anything that's ever actually existed. Okay, so I have two pre-assembled kits here. One is the standard kit, and the other has an optional SD card header where you can actually store a disk image on the SD card and boot from that. This is optional. There's actually enough memory on here to store a small image. And in fact, if you order the kit version of this, it just comes with the pre-assembled board here, which is Ron's hat board. And it's up to you to bring your own Raspberry Pi Pico and flash it yourself, which is actually quite easy. And we will take a look at how to do that. All right, why don't we take a look at how you actually use this thing assembled, and then we'll get into how to build one up from the kit. All we're gonna need is a USB keyboard. I have this handy purple iMac G3 keyboard, a USB mouse. Of course, we are using the hamster mouse. And importantly, we need one of these USB on-the-go adapters, which plugs into the USB port on the Pi Pico, and we plug the keyboard and mouse into that. The iMac keyboard has a convenient hub built in. Plug VGA into the VGA connector, and then simply plug micro USB power into the Pico Mac board, which will power the whole thing and boot it right up. Look at that. Now the borders on the screen are normal. The original Macintosh used a very weird resolution, 512 by 342, and the Pi Pico is outputting VGA resolution at 640 by 480, hence the borders. Oh yeah, look at that. Good old bricks. Well, it's worth mentioning there is no sound here, at least not yet, because we only have a VGA connector on the hat. There is no audio out. Oh yeah, good old load runner. How frickin' cool is this? Hey, you can't get me now, can you? Okay, before I just get caught up playing a bunch of games on this thing, let's see what it's like to actually build up one of these and program the Micro Mac ourselves, because I think building these things, that's half the fun of these projects. Oh, by the way, did you know that channel members usually get early access to these kinds of videos? You can sign up down below and it really helps support the channel. Now the kit version actually comes with this board pre-assembled. The only thing you'll have to do is source your own $4 Raspberry Pi Pico, and then you just need to solder it yourself, such as with a nice convenient header. And if you order the optional SD card board, all of the surface mount components are already soldered. You'll just need to attach it to the Pi Pico with a little bit of soldering, just like so. Of course, we'll need to flash this microcontroller with the Micro Mac emulator, but that's really easy to do. 
let me show you. So I have my Raspberry Pi Pico here, which uh, I found in a drawer and I have no idea what's on here, but that's okay. We're gonna download a ready to go image, which is linked from the JCM page for this. This is awesome because it lets you build images from your own disk images to flash to Pico Micro Mac, but it also has a ready to go image right here, which includes system 3.2 and some software. And then flashing one of these is incredibly easy. There is a button here. All we have to do is pull down this button, plug the micro USB in here, let go, and then the Pi Pico will make itself available as a removable disk. And all you need to do is drag the .uf2 file over to it. it will unmount itself and then flash the new firmware. We can see it blinking away right here. And this should be done. And now we'll do just a little bit of easy soldering here to put a, a header on our Pi Pico. All right, let's test this thing out. We'll just pop it on here to make our nice little VGA sandwich. And power. <laughs> Look at that immediately. Booting into Mac OS. All right, we'll give this a graceful shutdown. And then let's do some more modifications. Let's add this SD card header. So I'm going to clear some of the solder off of here. Let's build a new firmware for our newly assembled Pico Mac here so we can use the SD card and give ourselves more than 128K of memory. So first we will clone the Pico Mac repository with recursive. Then we need to install the RP2040 SDK. Then we're gonna do make mem size equals 208, which I think is the maximum that we can do on this thing. And now we're gonna build the firmware and configure it to use some options. We have to give it the Pico SDK path, CMake, and then we're gonna do dUse SD equals true. Oh, I forgot this is a touchscreen. And we're gonna do d mem size equals 208 to give us our 208K of memory. All right, well, quick side note, it's a lot easier to install the Raspberry Pi Pico development environment on Ubuntu. So if you're using Linux, I'd recommend using Ubuntu. In any event, I've taken the UMAC image and booted it up in mini VMAC so I could install a bunch of software and we'll see if that software will actually run on micro Mac, including my favorite game, Shuffle Puck running <laughs> way too fast here in mini vmac all right i flashed the firmware with 208k of ram to the pico here let's take that same disk image we just booted in the emulator and try to boot it on this hardware all right power there it is all right, this LCD is pretty cool, but let's try to do something a little more authentic. Oh yeah, look at that. On the Sony Trinitron Multiscan 200. All right, one thing I noticed now that I'm on this bigger screen here is the mouse moves in kind of a weird way. Like if I try to do a circle with the mouse, I get a diamond pattern on the screen. Anyway, let's try some software. First up, Flappy Mac by Gruz. Does not like 208K of RAM. Kind of expected that. All right, how about Shuffle Puck? Ah, oh, no, I bet it's not enough memory. All right, let's try Rogue, one of my all time favorite games. And <laughs> yes, it looks like it works. Awesome, look at this, we have Rogue. Oh, I killed a Kestrel, awesome. Rogue works great. Let's try one more 
interesting piece of software. How about an Apple II emulator, the two in a Mac? And not enough memory. Also not surprising. All right, how cool would it be if we got this actually working on a real vintage Macintosh display? If this works, I will be absolutely amazed. Let's apply power here. Oh, uh, it's not happy. There's no vertical sync. Although I do see the toolbar in the wavy display here. All right, I now have an adjustable adapter thanks to a gender changer. Let's give this a shot. I'm sure this thing just doesn't like the 640 by 480 coming out of here. All right, let's try this absolute behemoth of a silicon graphics monitor. My goodness, if this works, that will be the most cursed thing I've ever done. Oh my God, there it is. <laughs> it's a little small. Let's see if we can adjust the size here. Oh yeah, look at this. That is cursed. <laughs> look at this. It's a little dim on this display, but I think that's just the signal being output from this thing. Look at that. What an incredible sight. Now we can really play Rogue. Oh, it looks awesome. Oh, this is so cool. I don't think there is any much more fun you can have for under $20 than this thing. Oh, I got a haircut. Okay, well that'll do it for this look at the Micro Picro Pico Micro Mac. What an incredibly cool little thing. And it's amazing the things that people can come up with for inexpensive microcontrollers these days. I mean, the Raspberry Pi Pico costs $4. And the board that Ron made, you can actually make that yourself. There are instructions on the GitHub page for Pico Micro Mac on how to just wire up your own breadboard version of this board. I will of course link to all of this stuff down below. So thank you to everyone who contributed code and hardware and expertise to make this thing work. And thank you Ron for hanging out with me on Discord and uh, answering some of my questions. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Alex the Rat, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Darren Johnstone, Dave's Garage, Drew Hamlin, Eduardo Fonseca, Three Hours Nine, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rajansky, Graham, Greg from Rutk Mods, Harris Brody, JS, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Nick Daniels, oh, it's just Jose, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Steve Salivan, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.